Hello everybody, welcome back to a new episode of I Talk to Notebooks. My name is Sarah and today I want to do the journaling style tag, which was initially started by Melly Rose and then Paperworm's cat did it. Um, or I guess I should say Paperworm because that's her tags are different on different platforms. And she said that anybody who watched the video was invited to do it. So I watched her video and now I'm doing it. So um, I'll link their videos below obviously but I just think we should get into it. I thought it was a fun prompt and why not? So the first question is already off to a bit of a, an interesting start because it is preferred journal size. I know you can't read this, this is for me only. My preferred journal size is this. So we need to get some things straight right off the bat, okay? I live in the United States of America, okay? The land of the free and the home of the brave. And we do not use measurements for notebooks. Okay, what is this A5, B6, C4 nonsense? Um, no thank you. We believe in freedom here and we make our notebooks whatever size we want and we don't fit ourselves into little boxes, okay? This is my Holy Grail journal, Markings by C.R. Gibson. Of course, this particular one has been discontinued. I almost bought a replacement on eBay and I thought to myself, no, 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 I don't need to do that. You know, no need to hoard journals. No need. It'll all be okay because I'll just buy another one when I want another one, when I'm ready to use another one. And of course, now the seller is on vacation and all hope is lost. It's okay. This is discontinued, but it is a Markings by Sierra Gibson Leatherette Journal. Now they do have the black and the brown ones still. I mean this particular color. They stopped doing the colored ones, which I don't know why, because I know their black and brown ones are super popular, so I can't believe the colored ones wouldn't be as well. So the dimensions on this one cannot be measured by letters and numbers. We have to use something called a ruler. In America, we also believe in hard work, okay? So no lazy ways out, and we're gonna be measuring this journal. And if you think I'm gonna use these sissy little centimeters down here, again, America. Okay, I don't care if it's, oh, it's better because it's multiples of 10. No, 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 no. Stop it with the socialism. I'm gonna be using my American inches. So this one is about, and I can't measure this because it's so um, fat, but it's about five, about five and a quarter inches by like eight something. It's just totally random, like eight and a quarter. It's not quite five and a quarter. It doesn't even measure out nicely in inches. In fact, yeah, memes aside, if we do, I wonder if centimeters would actually, maybe this is like a European company. Yeah, right, that looks like 13 centimeters. And there's, that's not centimeters. That's just not, so no, it doesn't work out in either. So it's about, it's about five inches by eight inches. It's about that. That's usually what I look for in a journal because this has worked out so well for me. Um, so I really like this size. Um, as well as everything else about the journal. So the other question, second question was, doodles you repeatedly do in your journals? And at first I was like, well, that's oddly specific. Do I even do that? No, I don't. And then I remember that actually, absolutely I do, just not so much lately. But back in college, and even in my childhood, I used to do these repeated journals. And all throughout my journals, you can find these doodles, but, um, I'll show you one, an excerpt from one particular journal that I have from college where it shows a couple of these doodles just to give you a taste of them. So, uh, let's just see if I can find it real quick. Okay, so here's an example right here. Luckily this is spiral bound so it's easy to just show the parts I wanna show and nothing else. So I used to do these checker patterns with the squares filled in uh, to make like another pattern within it so you can see there's a spiral here this one i did with pilot g2 pens um i really like these because they were mindless and obsessive but they usually look cool i learned how to from a highlights magazine as a child and then you can see another example of this i used to do this in a lot of my journals but there's another example even in this journal itself i don't know if you can read i tried to do letters it says no fear only forward and then a forward arrow and that was like my life motto in college. Um, I didn't usually do these cutouts like I did in this picture, but I did this pattern like everywhere all the time. So it's just nested zigzag triangles with dots. Don't know why, it was just easy and satisfying to draw. Hmm. 
Next one is pen color most used. Um, overall black in recent years, like if we do the last two to four years, I would say brown and olive green would be the most common. Maybe brown would be the most, um, given my, you can see of all my ink bottles, the one with the noticeable dent in it is the brown ink. This is Monteverde Brown Sugar. I don't know if you can tell, but there's, yeah, it's hard to show on camera because the ink sloshes back. But that one I've used a lot of. Um, okay, and then messy or organized. Um, both. It looks organized, but thought-wise it's very messy. I don't know how better to explain it than that. Like, it doesn't look crazy and messy, but if you read it, it's very messy. So that's all I can explain. Something you always have to include. So I think this is more of a visual style. So I, so for visual style, I would say organized definitely lately. Something I always have to include is, well, if we're going to be technical, the date. Because uh, my first journal entry of all time did not have a date. I forgot to put one. And then after that, I just started putting the date because that's what everybody in books and movies did in their journals. And then later, when I was in middle school, I actually found out that at one point, a boy that I liked liked me back at, before, at some other point in time. So I wanted to calculate when he had liked me. So I actually used the dates in my journals of other events that I had actually written down to narrow down when he liked me based on the facts. And I was actually able to do it successfully. And that's when I was like, wow, these dates are really important because I can go back and figure stuff out. And it actually has been really useful because if you write pretty frequently and you date everything, then you kind of have a pretty airtight case for how you remember things. Because when you write things down, you remember them better and then you have proof. And it's like, I wrote this down. So unless I was like gaslighting you three years ago, that'd be a lot of work to go through. So here's proof of that my story's right. So date is really important, but visually speaking, which is what this prompt is actually about, Probably stickers. I use that's the stickers and washi tape, but definitely stickers. Stickers are consistent. I always use stickers, it seems, for the most part. Um, I started using stickers a lot in college, and once I started, I realized how much it was transforming how I felt about my journals and how much I wanted to journal. So I always use them, and I have a huge sticker collection, and I just love to use them. I would advocate a lot of people are like, oh, we need to do stationary minimalism. When it comes to stickers and to some extent washi tape though, not as much because the, the, the rolls are thick and you get a lot on them usually. But with stickers, I would recommend getting a decent sized collection so that you can feel comfortable putting down a lot of stickers without feeling like you're depleting your collection, if that's possible. Obviously, if you are not able to do that for whatever reason, whether it's because you don't have good stickers in your area or because you are on a pretty tight budget, then, you know, no, I totally understand that. Um, and then you are gonna have to be more careful. But if it's just a psychological thing where you're like, I just wanna buy two stickers and now I don't wanna use either of them because I only have two, don't put yourself through that. I did that for a while and it's like, just don't, just buy stickers, it's worth it. You're gonna feel so much better about your journals because it's just, you just put it down and then your journal page is ready to go and it looks great. So I need to show my oldest and newest journals. You all have already seen both of these. This is my oldest one from 2007 to 2009. I was literally 10. And then my newest journal, which I am loving and blasting through, is this one that I just showed you, my markings by Sierra Gibson, Robin's Egg Blue with some Hobby Lobby stickers all over it. And just looking at this thing is so awesome. I just feel so peaceful with it. How has my style evolved? Well, I used to not use any decorations and now I use a lot of decorations. I don't know if you can see the camera. No, you can't see, but I have all of these decorations just on my desk. I've got washi tape everywhere. I've got stamps, inks, different types of inks. And that's just what you can see on, right immediately on this desk behind me. Um, actually, there's no reason I can't show you. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys. Like, look, I've got stamps here and washi here and uh, ink and stuff, more washi. Hopefully nothing identifying. I'm just going to pass the computer here. And then over here, I've got... Um, big rat's nest but most importantly there's a lot of there's a lot of decorations here that I use very much regularly uh, this needs to be cleaned up but I've got decorative paper all stacked through here um, washi washi um, sticker drawers this drawer is empty I'm actually oh no it's not empty now I have stamping stuff in here um, random supplies note cards um, cardstock and other paper markers and things 
And then over here on my desk, I also have uh, stuff in here. I've got, you know, more mild liners, little pieces of paper. I've got um, stencils and more writing equipment. And I even have like all these devices that I like to use, which I want to do a video about uh, for decorations like label makers and different types of little photo printers. All this to say that now I have a lot to use that I use on a regular basis. But before, back when I started journaling, like in middle school, at the peak of that era, I only had these to journal with. Um, I had one of those big book boxes from Michaels, you know the boxes that were shaped kind of like a book with the magnetic clasps? I had it under my bed in a far corner of my room so that nobody would bother it or disturb it or see it. I'd always keep it tucked under my bed and I'd have all my journals in there. And I had one black ballpoint pen and it was not a Pilot G2. This is a representation. I had a, like a really cheap ballpoint pen that was handed out by some company, like one of those free pens you get somewhere that I found in our house. And for some reason, I just decided that was gonna be my journaling pen. I just kept it in that box. And um, it was um, not a very good pen. It didn't write smoothly. It had really faint ink. It was a hideous shade of semi-transparent yellow. But I used it until it dried up and then I threw it away. And I kept these glitter gel pens. There were more of them then, maybe eight to 10. These are the only ones that still have ink left in them to this day. These are really good glitter gel pens. I love them a lot. And then I had one glue stick that I found somewhere. It was a prized possession. And I had that in case I wanted to glue in anything like church bulletin or, you know, movie tickets or something like that. Not that I would ever have, you know, any kind of scrapbook paper or purchased ephemera or anything like that. You know, now I use this for paper and things. And before I just used it for real life stuff that I wanted to stick in. I certainly didn't have any photo printing capability back then. So that was really the only equipment I used. I wasn't big into decorating, as you see in my flip through videos so far. So yeah, that's a real part of my journaling that has evolved is how I decorate and how much, how significant decorating is in my process. Decorations into um, journaling, which really helped me to be more consistent and to enjoy it more and to really find a creative side to it that I never really had thought was possible. Um, I think there was another question too that I don't see on this list, but I'm pretty sure I heard them say it. So I think it was, what do you write about the most? And what I write about the most is, first of all, probably my relationships with people, actually. That'd be, first place would be my relationships with other people um, of all kinds. I just obsessively write about my relationships with other people. Um, and then probably number two, which I was really, all these things are surprising because I don't feel like I think about them that much, but then you go back and look at my journals and it's like full of this stuff. So I guess I do. And then the second most thing is, um, is, uh, it is my, um, second most number two is religion and my relationship with God and like with the church and just the history of the church and things. And just a lot of like verses and like stuff about God even to this day like my current journals have a ton because it kind of makes sense right if you're brought up in a very religious community that you're going to be ready writing about God a lot because all the adults in your life are constantly telling you that God is the only thing that matters so I wrote about him a lot then of course but now even now it's a very different way but I do write about God all the time um and Bible stuff and things like that so even though we are not a preaching sermon channel, I'm not gonna go into that, that is a big part of my journals. I write about God a lot. And I never think of myself as that. Like I don't follow any Bible journaling pages. I don't follow any like war, I follow like one war binder page. It's like just not really my style to just be journaling about God all the time, I feel like. And then I look at my journals and I'm journaling about God all the time. So okay, then I guess, <laughs> whatever, it is what it is. And then third most would be my I guess my theories about things. I was watching some philosophy videos recently of this guy named Zizek, and I don't know anything about him, so don't come for me if he's like bad, but 
I was watching a video of his that came up, and then um, I was like, who is this person? So I Googled him, and it's like, oh, he's a modern philosopher. It's like, how do you get paid to just say what you think about the world? Like, he's not citing any sources. He's not pointing to any studies. He's just saying what he thinks. He's just sharing his opinion on existence. And then he's, like, brilliant for it, I guess. But, like, I have opinions about all of that stuff. I've got so many crackpot theories in my journal. But, like, oh, no, 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 that's not a good theory. I'll never be a famous philosopher. I would not be shocked if posthumously, if whoever ends up with my journals is like, hey, she's got some good thoughts. Let's get this published. And then I'm like, oh, Sarah from I Talk to Notebooks is the greatest philosopher of the 21st century. It's like, yeah, pretty much. And you all were sleeping on me. So I read a lot of theories and philosophy stuff unrelated to religion, just like why I think people see ghosts and what I think about the nature of time and Oh, you know, very smart stuff. I'm sure it's like way above your level. So with all that out of the way, that is the journaling style tag. Thank you so much for watching. If you are watching this video, guess what? You are tagged. So do it if you want to do it. And please send it to me. I would like to see your video if you do it. So my Instagram handle is I talk to notebooks. It's in the description. There's underscores and stuff. So make sure you see that if you want to send your video to me, because I would like to see it. And I would like to follow you on Instagram if you have a journaling account. So anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.